Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we are going to take a peek inside of the Inmotion V10F and see how it's made. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Right away, also big thanks to MyEWheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. And if you want to buy an electric unicycle in Europe, feel free to use my promo code WRONGWAY at my eWheels site, which will give you a 5% discount. And I also receive a kickback from that, so you'll also support the channel by using this promo code. Now, this video is not a guide on how to change your tire in your Emotion V10F. There's other videos that do it better. This is more of a teardown that shows the quality of this wheel. And if you would also like to see a teardown like this of the Tesla V2, which I also have, then hit the like button and comment below. Um, so this video will show you how the V10F is made and I will also tell you what screws to unscrew to get into this wheel. So right out of the bat you need to take the two screws out which are in the, the pedals and funnily enough they have also a plastic part which is I think against shocks. Um, anyways, it's pretty interesting. I didn't see that in other Gotway or Bigodi wheels. The next thing you want to do is screw out a small screw which is below the L hanger which keeps the pedal rod in place. Now we can remove the pedal rod with a hammer but it goes out really easily and there's also two washers you need to keep. And right out of the bat the pedals are also pretty interesting because on the top side there is grip tape but on the other side of the pedals there is actually rubber. The honeycomb shaped rubber was already previously available on Emotion V10 wheels. Now they've added a layer of grip tape so your foot actually sticks to the pedal. A very nice improvement. And because of the rubber I guess there's also a little less vibration when riding. But when I do ride in barefoot shoes I actually feel that there is a bit of give in the pedal. It sort of feels a bit strange. Comparing these foot blades to the first ones that were on the Emotion V10, I think these are also stronger as I actually broke one foot plate on a v Emotion V10. Now the next step is to remove the side pads because there are some screws uh, hidden underneath the side pad. I think it's not the best solution. I mean the side pad could be Velcro or screws should be somewhere else. But anyways, that's how it is in the V10. Then there's also some screws on the bottom which you need to get out. The top three screws have a metal thread, which is very nice to see, although most of the bottom screws just screw into the plastic. But the plastic is actually shaped to accommodate the screw, so it's not that bad. The next part is a bit tricky and requires a bit of force, as you need to pry open the shell from the wheel. And the outer shell, the side shell so to speak, is very snugly fit in there, so it actually takes a bit of time to pry it open. By removing the cover we can take the first glimpse inside the V10F and it's actually very clean. I didn't ride this wheel a lot yet but it went out on a ride 25 kilometers in snowy and salty conditions so it's very nice to see it that it's so clean inside. And now you can also see the LEDs but we'll take a closer look at them later on. Now you can't see any battery, you can't see any motherboard, which is pretty good. This means that they are safe somewhere behind the cover. And actually it's the cover you see right here. You have to remove another seven screws, which are Phillips head, sadly the ones that go into the plastic, and then you can lift up the motherboard cover. The cool thing about it is that it's covered in silicone, so no water can ingress. And it also has some cutouts for cables. So great. Out of the box there's no way for water to get into your motherboard area. Really really cool. Now we can see there's actually two motherboards. One is for the main power and the other one is for the accessories. And here you can see also a XD I think 60 plug which you need to disconnect first if you ever wanted to perform a tire change. To unplug the motor you actually just need to unplug three connectors, not like five in Bigodi or Vedran, which also makes the tire change a bit easier. Once you disconnect the battery cable, be sure to just power on the wheel for a second just to make sure that the capacitors are empty and then you can unplug the motor. 
So once you've done that, you need to just remove another four hex screws, which are on this side and on the other side of the wheel. And you can just take the L hangers with the wheel out. So in terms of a tire change, it's actually not that hard. This motherboard is cooled with a ventilator, which is underneath this small daughter board on the top. And behind the, these two motherboards, there is the heatsink, which cools down the wheel. So on the opposite side of the heatsink, there is just the wheel well of the USC. The motherboard is screwed in place with uh, threaded screws, so pretty good. But the heatsink itself is uh, screwed into the shell with um, wood screws, but thankfully there's also some thread locker installed and they don't go through the shell like they do on the MSP or RS by Gotway or Bigodi. Still, it would be even nicer to see some additional precautions to not let the motherboard move around, so i.e. Um, threaded screws. But other than that, the motherboard fits really snugly in place, so just a thumbs up here in motion. Now look, at this point, this is probably all you need to know if you have a Inmotion V10F and want to make a tire change or something else. Because what comes now is way more complicated and you will need more patience, more set of screws and just more time to get this thing apart. Because there is a lot of parts to the V10F. To lift up the cover that is in the middle here, which looks very much the same like the one that is on the other side, you need to remove another seven Phillips head screws. And what you find underneath is, yep, pretty much uh, nothing. It's just a pass through to the LEDs, which are on the other side. And behind this plexi, which is in the middle, there is actually the wheel well. So the plexi is just there to keep water, dust, or whatever out of the inside of the V10F. Fitted with the same screws as the radiator on the other side, but also sealed. Really cool. To open up the V10F even further, you will need to remove another set of Phillips head screws along the side of the V10F. There's really a lot of screws in this wheel. And it's all sort of like a puzzle. You need to remove this first to remove something else. So if you want to take the two shells apart, you need to take apart everything else that is on the wheel. It's really a lot of work to just open up the wheel. In the meantime, I also removed the screws that hold the L hangers in place. And here you can see how easy it is to take out the wheel with the L hangers. There is no plastic, nothing holding back the cables uh, when it comes to the shell to take the motor out. So a tire change, as said, is not that difficult on the V10F. Here you can also see that the L hangers have holes inside to make them A stronger and B also lighter. After removing all the screws on the edge of the wheel, finally I can take out the trolley handle and the front cover as well as the rear cover. Everything in the V10F is sort of symmetrical at some point. Probably it makes just manufacturing easier. On the top you can see now the exposed uh, power button and battery indicator, as well as the charge port, lights and speakers. To take the wheel apart further, you will need to remove another set of hex screws, this time, this time they're really small, and to remove all of these screws that hold the two shelves together, you actually need to remove the cover which is in front of the LEDs. The LED covers are held in by another seven Phillips head screws and you need to take all of them out to access the LED RGB panels. And as we see now, these aren't really RGB panels. These are LED strips which have a plexi element in front of them to diffuse the light. And this is the same thing that they did on the V11 with the rear tail light. And I gotta say, it looks really good on the V10. And it's actually a very, very clever design. The screw that you need to get out is actually located in the biggest panel of these three. The screws that hold both halves together aren't really um, placed symmetrical. So they're not from both sides at the same time. For example, the front element goes through from the left to the right and you can just unscrew it from the left. And some element, for example, in the back can be just unscrewed from the right panel. 
In the meantime, I can also show you the cool module, which is the light and speaker module on the V10F. It's both in the front and the rear. So the front and the rear has a speaker installed, but in front, obviously, there is a bright white light, and in the rear, there is a red light. Both had have just two connectors in place, and actually, you don't need to screw that many screws out to access them. Um, but nevertheless, it's pretty cool that they installed a module like that on the V10F. But still we need to take the two halves apart and actually holding together these two halves is a lot of silicone and it's really a lot. It's really hard to pry it open but in the same time it means that it's really safe in terms, in terms of waterproofing. Whilst opening the two halves also the lift switch or button will fall out. And finally after a bit of prying I got the two halves to separate. Sadly, I will not take them apart all together as they are still connected to the battery, etc. But I can at least show you what is on the inside. And looking from the inside, you can see the heatsink on the top and mainly the battery. And somehow it also had a hole in there in this sort of semi-plastic, semi-rubber compartment. I don't know if I did it or if it was from factory, but you can see that the battery is actually sealed twice. So it has the blue shrink tape and it also has this white mm, plastic which is wrapped around the battery. So this means that the battery is really safely secured and snugly fit into place in the V10F. And it's also interesting to see that most of the V10F is just plastic and nothingness. The battery is on the top, the motherboard is on the side, but other than that, like this wheel could be probably a lot smaller. Still with the battery on the top, some people say it's top heavy, but now that I've also ridden it quite a bit, I find that it's actually surprisingly stable. But it's once again, it's really good to see that the uh, batteries are properly sealed and actually the connectors uh, which uh, go through the middle of the shell where they meet, they also have some rubber sealant. And all in all, I think they just get, did a pretty, pretty good job on the water sealing on this wheel. And here you can see a bit more of the silicone where the two halves of the wheel touch. You can see a bit more of the plastic, like plasticky encasing of the battery. And once again, the heat sink, which gets all the heat out of the wheel. But I think that is actually not enough on the V10F. Like I had my V10F overheating quite a bit, quite several times. So in this wheel, when it comes to performance riding, I think that's really not the wheel designed for that. So that's been it, the Emotion V10F teardown. And also be careful if you reassemble the wheel and don't um, try to screw the screw in too intensely, too hard, because you might break the plastic. But anyways, I hope you've liked this video. Maybe it was helpful to you. you and if you like to see what's inside of electric vehicles that are on my channel, then just hit the like button, subscribe and comment if you want to see more like that. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.